huge, huge weekend for the UK to be able to get money in the bank here. Uh, and, and I'm not using the hyperbole here, but it is a humongous deal for us. You could argue this is one of the best cards we've ever had in the UK when you factor in the star power that's involved, right? Like, it's really, really exciting, man. Uh, how how pumped are you to, you know, you, you're in singles action, which we haven't been able to say for a while. Cody Rhodes, that's a big showdown, something that we haven't seen before. It's fresh. Uh, how you feeling, man, as, uh, you know, where you are now, you've risen to a, a big place in the card and you, you have a big place in such a landmark event for us. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's pretty surreal to be honest. You know, you know, just you bringing it up gives me goosebumps. Like it's uh, it's pretty crazy. You know, uh, seeing to where I was at, you know, three years ago. This August will be my three year anniversary uh, since I debuted against Seth at SummerSlam. So the fact that uh, you know, I'm now going into the O2 in London against Cody Rhodes in the singles with uh, with Rhea by my side, man, it's uh, it's pretty crazy, and I'm. I'm excited, man. I'm ready. I'm ready to go, and I'm ready to beat his ass. <laughs> it's beautiful timing as well, man. Like, the reactions Cody gets, juxtaposed with the reactions you get. I would argue, alongside Seth Rollins, maybe you are the three in WWE right now that get the strongest reactions, right? Like, um, you must be so excited for, and it will be a red-hot O2 arena. You know this. Um, you and Cody, that's, that's, that's ripe to make magic, isn't it? Yeah, man, I'm I'm excited, and especially like you said, the reactions that you know he's been getting, and uh, the the people not letting me talk for some strange reason when I'm I'm just trying to speak my mind and let them know that what they're doing is wrong. But you know, I just I just want to get my 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 side of the story out, but they're not letting me. So uh, I'm gonna have to beat it out on out on Cody. <laughs> let's uh, let's rewind quickly to uh, WrestleMania, man. Obviously yourself and your father, Ray. Again, no exaggeration. I would say it was the hottest story going into the weekend. You know, even with Roman and Cody, et cetera, like everyone was talking about father versus son. Such a monumental moment, just not just for you, but for your family. It's historic. Now that you look back on it, like how pleased are you? With, you know, you didn't win, but how pleased are you with the, the moment? Though you know, being able to do that with your dad is something that literally a handful of people, if that, will ever be able to say that. Right? It's it's crazy, dude. It's uh, it's very very surreal. Um, like I said, I've I've said it before, and I'll continue saying it, man. I'm I'm extremely blessed and uh, to be in this position that I'm in, and very fortunate. Um, but yeah, it was such a surreal moment, you know, being able to go through this roller coaster of emotions. Um, before leading into the match, you know, with all the media and everything that we had to do, um, getting the family involved, the Hall of Fame, um, and even, you know, during the match, you know, so we have said the West Coast guy, I'm a Cali kid, so him coming as Snoop Dogg, you know, and me not being able to, to you know, almost get down to the music because he's coming out with the enemy. And then that Eddie Guerrero music hits, and it makes me feel some type of way. And then, of course, the Rey Mysterio music hits, the Buyaka. And it's, uh, it's, it's uh, like I said, a roller coaster of emotions that I'm going through in this ring. Um, and it's, uh, it's just surreal. I don't think it hit me until later on that night. You know, I was in my hotel room by myself, uh, hungry. And I texted uh, one of my best friends was with me. Uh, his name is Daniel. And we went to go get some food down down at the hotel, some you know, some hot dogs, and that's when it really hit me. I was like, "Damn!" I was like, "We just we just did this, dude." And it's, uh, it it wasn't the outcome that we wanted. I was like, "But I beat his ass." <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing, and all man, like because obviously you want it to be as amazing as it possibly can be because it is that kind of once in a lifetime opportunity. You look back on it and you, you're pleased with how it went. It, what, did it exceed your expectations? Um, I think even at, at the moment, I wasn't, uh, I didn't know what to expect. You know, it was, it, there was so much story and, uh, little things that were going into this match that we didn't like, I didn't even know what to expect from it. And I, even afterwards, I wasn't, not that I wasn't happy with it. I just, there was so much going on. I didn't know what, how to feel from it until afterwards when I watched the match back a couple of times, even now, um, like I'll still I'll I'll put it on and watch it and I'll uh, I'll be I'll be pretty happy with it. And I'm like I I could have done certain things better, but overall I'm happy with it. 
the, the switch for Ray was obviously you talking to your mum a certain way and then obviously your sister gets involved in the actual match. Uh, whose idea was it to kind of, for that to be the the tipping point for Ray, right? Like where he said, this is where the match happens. I think I just knew, you know, mm. I knew when it came to, because I had done everything, you know, under the sun to try and get under his skin. Um, when it came to slapping him, you know, I tore his mask off. I got involved in every way possible. Um, but I knew as soon as uh, I got mama involved, it was game over. Cause even at, even at home when I was a kid, you know, it was always, uh, disciplining was always mom. Um, but when dad would come home, it was always dad. But when dad was home, there were certain things where it was like, we knew it was a big deal where we would ask dad or dad would get us in trouble. And he would just be like, go talk to your mom. So we like, we knew that mom was always the final straw. Um, so when I found out that they were going to be on SmackDown, I was like, this is this is where I can really push some buttons because I know I you know I do a lot of things and I say a lot of things I would never actually hit my mother maybe unless she pushes the correct button on me I would never actually touch my mom I would have maybe mommy body slammer if necessary but I would never touch my mom but as soon as I got in her face and yelled at her I knew that was a button that was gonna be pushed on my dad and even with my sister at the match i don't think at wrestlemania i don't think it was kind of like a it was very on the fly because she like i said i saw her holding this cup and i was originally going to just take it and drink the water that was in it because i didn't know it was it was clear could have been tequila could have been water could have been vodka who knows my sister's a she's a what's what's the word i'm looking for a loose cannon so like you don't really know what you're getting with her so i grabbed it and i'm it didn't smell funky. So I was like, oh, here we go. And there wasn't too much in there. So I was like, if I drink this, it's not going to do anything for me. So I just poured it in her face. <laughs> Has she said much to you about that since? The improvisation? No, she, no, she, she wasn't too happy about it. But, you know, I, I had to do what I had to do. Of course you did. Of course you did. Let's talk about the Hall of Fame quick, man. Because I, I was there. Uh, and it seems that everyone, what a lot of people loved that the story kind of continued and continued and, and the Hall of Fame was a part of that. Is there a little bit of you that wishes you could have, you know, the father-son moment could have enjoyed the Hall of Fame or do you kind of love that, you know, you kept telling your story and again, like I said, so many people were entertained. Do you want the truth? Yeah, of course. So for me, I enjoyed being able to walk out of it because even though it was his Hall of Fame, I had my moment, mm. right? So people talked about his speech. People talked about him being in the Hall of Fame. But the, the topic of discussion was me walking out on his speech, which was, you know, initially a, a plan to try and get in his head before the match, of course. But yeah, I'm sure at the end of the day would have been a cool father son moment for me to be able to be a part of it and, you know, sit there with the whole family and, and, you know, big, be one big happy family. But that's just how I, I didn't envision it that way, you know? And, uh, yeah, I walked out on it, but you know, I could still hear it as I was walking out. I can hear all, all the gibberish he was talking anyways. So it, it was all, it was all fun anyways, you know, being able to walk out of there and, getting that reaction because I don't think a lot of people knew I was going to walk I don't I didn't know I was going to walk out you know I think it was very uh on on the fly type of thing especially with uh with Rhea and Priest being there and I'm glad that they they tagged along and got up with me I knew they were going to anyways but I'm just glad that that solidified it for me yeah you know someone else who walked out of the Hall of Fame or who, who moved seats is is Buddy Matthews I wonder what that was about <laughs> I, I don't know man maybe uh maybe you thought Aaliyah was backstage or something that must be it. That must be it. <laughs> I wanted to say to you, Norman, you turned 26 right around Mania too, right? Yeah, right after. So uh, my birthday was April 5th and Mania was, uh, I believe, April 1st. So four days later, I turned 26. Did you have a, a wonderful celebration? Talk me through it. Uh, I actually, it wasn't too, it wasn't too bad. I was able to go home to San Diego for a couple of days. Uh, got to eat some some good food down there. You know, I'm a big uh, In-N-Out guy, so I had my In-N-Out burger for my birthday. Uh, I got to spend time with some friends. Um, not a lot of family down there that I can spend time with, you know, so I just, 
So I just hang out with the friends and the and and the wifey. But uh, no, nah, man, the birthday was good. You know, I'm 26 and blessed. Yeah, you really are. You are. Um, let's talk about mummy while we're here. Um, that dynamic it seems like it's only growing stronger, right? Like it, week after week, people are getting more and more captivated by the pair of you. Talk to me about how you go about working on the chemistry and the presentation. Like one thing I think is really cool is that like you're you're kind of a couple, right? But you never kiss or anything, but no one needs you to because it's kind of like she, she's this towering presence, which is awesome in and of itself. Uh, and then of course you're kind of there too, just uh, you know poking the bear at everyone else. I I love it personally. Talk to me about how you kind of come to the agreement of how it's going to be presented and and how that. I guess how that dynamic works. Man, I it kind of just came out of nowhere. You know, it was uh, very out of the blue. Um, our relationship at first was very formal. You know, I, you know, I've said it before. She said it before. It was very, hi, how are you doing? And that was it, you know. Um, but I think with this dynamic, it kind of just, that first, I think, initial promo after Cardiff, where she came out and, you know, she said she made me into a man and all that stuff good stuff i think that implied everything it needed to to say you know she she did she did all she did all the heavy lifting and uh after that we you know we really kind of just became friends because we really do travel as a family well, you know me finn damien and Rhea, we're always traveling on the road together so our relationships are constantly growing with each other um not only with Rhea, you know but priest and finn you know those guys are my brothers now so it's like we're we're really are the Judgment Day family. And then with, with Rhea, with, yeah, and you can see it, you know, we're out there having fun. And uh, with Rhea too, man, she just, she's helped me so much, you know, being able to just get comfortable. And, you know, especially because she's 26, 27 years old, we're this, basically the same age, and she has so much experience on me, and she's accomplished so much already. So it's like the fact that she's there by my side, guiding me and helping me with everything and it's like she's she's the best man and it's honestly uh it's only making me better yeah I, and man like I, again we're here, we're seeing reports now all the time of uh you know how how much praise Rhea is getting like are, are you impressed as well she seems to be dealing with this knee problem and still like doesn't 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 miss a beat right and her, her character work is kind of killing it dude she's she's literally the best she you hand her anything and she'll go out there and kill it. Or even if you like, if she doesn't have an idea of what she's doing, she's going to go out there and kill it anyways. But she's honestly the best man. Like you can't like a lot of people say that she's, uh, you know, the face of the woman's division. My nah, man, she is the woman's division. She's, she's holding this thing on her back. You know, there's, there's a reason why she hasn't had many matches because there's no, there's no girls out there that can, that can go face to face with her and hold their own because she's going to go out there and demolish you because dude, she's, she's on top of her game right now. She's held every single title in WWE and she's not even 27 yet. Like it's, it's crazy. And the fact that she has so much experience and she's only getting started. She's been on the main roster for what, a couple years, three, four years. Like she has so much more to go. And it's like, who knows what the next evolution of Rhea Ripley will be, you know? Do you think she's got that like rare like China Beth Phoenix transcendent you know star power I, and genuine power? I think she has a mix of every all of that and is in her own category because she's she's a star man. She doesn't have to do anything. She's she's a stud too. Like you know, in ring outside the ring, she's a total killer, and it's it's really cool to see and and uh, it's cool to to see our relationship grow, you know, on TV and stuff and just seeing how we're getting comfortable with each other. And, you know, like you said, her star power, she stands there alone. And, like, people love her so much that they want to cheer her but hate me. So they feel like they have to, like, boo us, you know. But, like, they want to cheer for her. They We go out there and constantly getting the mommy chance. She, dude, she's literally – the best in the business right now and it's 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 pretty insane and i'm lucky to have her by my side man and call her my mommy that's it that's it brother not a bad life for you um not at all let's let's talk backlash quick man because again of all the things that you've been a part of in your career thus far 
Ooh, that was a hot, hot event, right? Like the crowd were going crazy there. And you were in the perfect match for it, man, with Priest and Bunny. Um, I mean, that in and of itself was was carnage and it was great. But then you add in, you know, like the return in you know, the Savio Vegas, the Carlito and and obviously yourself, Ray. There was just so many great components. Honestly, one of my favourite matches of the year, entertainment-wise, this is crazy. Um <laughs> You you got to meet Carlito a bit closely in that encounter, right? Uh very closely, yes. Yeah, a little too closely <laughs> for my liking. What was it like rubbing shoulders with the legend? Like getting to do that spot in in a way is cool, even if you don't think it is. It's so, it was so cool. Like yeah. you know, I I grew up watching these guys. You know, Carlito, Undertaker, Flair. Like so, for me to like, I would get in trouble for literally spitting apples at people. <laughs> um, back in the day at school so like for me to be able to be on the receiving end of that um it was definitely a, a surreal moment you know especially in puerto rico in such a big match and uh i was just uh i was just honored to to be able to be a part of that match with damien you know um and i know that was such a special moment for him because that was his that was his wrestlemania you know and he absolutely deserved it and he went out there and killed it and to be able to be a part of that was uh, was something special, and my face smelled like spit for a good two hours until I got to my hotel room and showered and freaking rinsed off. Because after after the match, I went back, you know, gave Priest his hug, told him he killed it. I was like, but I gotta go, dude. I was like, my face smells like spit. So I didn't say anything. I just looked at Bray Wyatt and he kind of shrugged his shoulders. We all knew something bad was about to happen. And we were just waiting. We were frozen in time. And suddenly all you hear is, are you trying to see my f 